Oh, man. Nothing like a print. Oh, hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire third season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be talking about something large format. A few months back here on the channel, I was up here at 400 West Ridge uh, showing you guys uh, how I work in the Platinum Palladium process. Making some really cool alternative process prints. Here's Lauren and the dogs. Here's a really nice one from uh, that I recently took a couple months back down in Hocking Hills. Just all sorts of fun that you can have with alternative photographic process. So I ended up sending my Platinum Palladium print uh, over to Canada to Mr. Azriel Knight. Azriel, I really hope you enjoy the print. I put a lot into it. And on my side of the exchange, well, I got my print from Mr. Greg Davis of The Naked Photographer. So we're gonna go through, kind of unbox our print, talk about it today. And I wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk about one of the last steps in the photographic process, not in the camera, not in the field, not even in the dark room. It's taking that finished print and putting it behind glass. We're talking framing. So first and foremost, let's take a look at, uh, at the print that Mr., uh, Mr. Greg Davis sent us for the exchange. Ah, if we take a closer look in our box here, Greg sent over something else. Oh, this is pretty cool. So Greg has these really nice uh, black walnut composition frames. And thanks for sending me one, Greg. Uh, this is his model for 6x7, 4x5, and 8x10. As a large format and 8x10 guy, I'm super appreciative to have one of these, and I think I just found a new favorite piece of large format fluff. He also has these available on his website, so nakedphotographer.us forward slash store. You can check out, he's got, uh, he's got these composition frames, a six by six and a six by nine for the medium format shooters or the two by three shooters. So lots of cool opportunities. It's got this really nice little lanyard so I can throw it around my neck and just play around and flick that over and kind of get used to composition. I definitely put this in the category of large format fluff because if you shoot a certain format for long enough, you will get a feel for the composition, but having one of these looks, uh, looks and feels a lot cooler than carrying around pieces of mat board or just doing like this back and forth all the time. Kind of a cool way to go. And they're surprisingly light, lightweight, made in the USA and made out of black walnut, which I appreciate because I got four of those in my backyard. So thanks, Greg. All right, let's get to the main event. Let's take a look at the print here. All right, so one thing I really appreciate about Greg's packaging, it's in a box, but it also has a rigid surrounding. Uh, these two pieces of corrugated material are sandwiching together our finished print. So I gotta cut open this part. And inside here we have, ta-da! I, I watched Greg's channel, I subscribed, so I knew this print was coming, but it's really cool to be able to have, uh, have a print uh, made specifically for you. He's got, his, uh, he's got his signature on the back there, that's really nice. So, you know what, I didn't even think about that when I put on the shirt today. There we go, so Ty B, uh, this is a print that he, uh, he took the photograph down in Savannah, Georgia. Ty B is like adjacent to uh, uh, Savannah, Georgia. So hey, it just, just happened to work out like that. But anyway, uh, Greg, print looks great. Uh, I believe this is on 11 by 14 Ilford Warm Tone fiber-based stock, and it has been selenium tone. So we've got that archival permanence, and it has a slightly uh, a slightly warmer than white base going on with it. Uh, prints a little bit larger than eight by 10, so we'll have to consider that uh, when we're going to put this behind glass, but otherwise, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about what we can do with this because prints sitting in plastic uh, or hiding in a box, I don't think that's doing anybody's work any justice. We gotta get this thing in a frame so we can put it on the wall uh, and share it with folks, kind of get it going through uh, the gallery that you're gonna see all the time, your own home. The only frame I had on hand that had a mat opening that's around the same size as Greg's print is this old one that Lauren made. You might recognize the characters in this frame. Uh, oh my gosh, look how, how young these two were. There's me and there's Mr. Strudel. You've probably seen Strudel here on the channel before. He's my little, little red dapple dachshund. Here he was just, oh my gosh, he was, I think he wasn't even a year old at this point. So I'm going to take the image that's out of here and we're going to do a hinge mount assembly for this frame. Before we get started with the framing process, let's go over some tools that we're gonna need. So obviously we need our prints. I've just got it still in the protective sleeve there. 
we're going to need one of the most important components, this stuff, which is called hinging tape. You want something, uh, they come in two varieties. It comes in self-adhesive and then it has a gummed variety, which needs to have water added to it. This stuff is great because you just peel it off and it's ready to stick. Heck, there's even instructions for how to do it on the back. So really easy stuff. This is acid-free, so it's archival. We're going to need our frame sectionals. So these are little aluminum Nielsen frames. This is what I recommend using. They're pretty inexpensive. Those frames, and when you buy a set of your long dimension and your short dimension, you're also going to get included a pack of hardware. This is for assembling your frame. To get that hardware mounted together, we're gonna need a flathead screwdriver. To hang our picture up, we're going to need some framing wire or hanging wire. We're gonna need something to clip that wire. So I've just got my multi-tool here with the, uh, with the wire clips. White gloves for handling, or if you have some extra PPE, that'll be good. Paper towels if we need to clean our glass. And that's it. Let's get to it. Let's throw on some cotton gloves here so we can handle everything. And we'll talk about our hinge mount a little bit. So there's Greg's print, we're gonna move that. Hey, I know those two. We've got our print right here. This is just an inkjet print. This is our mat board. And we open up the mat board. The print itself is just kind of, uh, it's just kind of floating in there. It's got this archival tape holding it down and I can pull this last little bit up right here. So the whole idea of hinge mounting a print is so we can easily lay in a fresh print, mount it indirectly so we're not using any adhesives or acid-based substances, dropping it down, finding a good framing for our prints, like here, I like that, and then fixing it into place before we drop it into the frame. So our framed print has a few different layers or components. This back layer here, this is just a foam core based backing board. Uh, if you wanna go really archival, you can use like a four ply or eight ply cotton rag stock. That'll be much more expensive. And you'll want the dimensions of that backing board to be the same as the dimensions of your, uh, your mat board. So our back layer is our mounting board. This is usually thicker. This is something that the print face should not be touching. It's only gonna be the back of the print and even then indirectly. So this is our backing board. We have our mat board. If you want this to be archival, again, go for a alpha rag mats that I recommend. This is just a, a standard crescent mat board, which over the years, it'll start to, this has a cream interior and it kind of yellows over the years, the more it's exposed to ultraviolet light but you can get this in different varieties. This is a two ply. They also come in four ply and eight ply. The more archival, the thicker it is, the more expensive it's gonna be. And then on top of that, you're gonna have your glazing or your glass. In this case, this is, uh, this is just simple glass. You can get this in special UV glass or acrylic, UV acrylic. Uh, the more archival it is, just like everything else, the more expensive it's going to be. That's simple hardware store glass. The downsides about glass, guys, this, uh, this can get chipped in the corners. And you can kind of see where the frame's been cleaned, but the glass behind it's gotten dirty. Uh, what I like about using uh, a mat system and a mounting system like this is you can kind of hide imperfections. So we're not going to the very, very edges of the print. We're giving ourselves a little bit of space. So our window or our opening on our mat is actually a little bit smaller than our print dimension. So just, uh, just account for that. Um, the more exact you are, the more exact your taping and mounting needs to be. I like to usually give myself uh, an eighth inch to a quarter inch for that window mat. So if you do have something like a really important detail on the edge, you'll have to account for that and be more exact in your mounting procedures. So the mat board here, this does, this is cut with a beveled edge, meaning that we can kind of see through the mat board and that provides an additional framing. With that beveled edge, it kind of gives you, uh, gives your eye somewhere to hit the, hit the edge of the print and say, okay, no, I'm, I'm right in here. Mat boards will come in all sorts of finishes. I like a white or off-white mat. This one is a little bit of a uh, more off-white mat. Uh, I try not to have a super bright mat, otherwise you may see a difference between like the paper-based white 
and the, uh, and the mat board. And the mounting board, this isn't gonna show up in the shot, so it, it's not gonna matter too much. So on our hinging tape here, uh, the roll is seated on the inside of the box, so when you open up this back flap here, the leading edge of the tape is right out here to turn the bottom of the box into this really handy dispenser. The hardest part of this tape is separating the very, very fine f linen fibers from the backing paper. That backing paper is actually thicker than the tape. It's just a very fine translucent linen. It's just gonna be gentle enough to hold on to the print while we position it and drop our mat over top of it. And because our frame is gonna be applying pressure from the back, this doesn't need to be too strong. It just needs to hold and float the print. So what I recommend doing for this step, we want to roll this underneath the box, and this is gonna give us a permanent feed of this tape coming out. So all we have to do is pull, pull pulling the box this way is gonna give us more tape. And what we should probably do is stage a bunch of this. So clip off, clip off some bits of tape so we have them for later. We're gonna need about, about six pieces of tape. So while I'm struggling to get all of this linen tape trimmed and ready for the rest of the episode. I want to take a moment to continue to thank all of you LFF sustaining members. Thank you so much for your continued support. I never would have imagined the kind of numbers of, of folks that are tuning in each and every week and especially to you who are uh, financially supporting the channel. So thank you very much. If you want to learn more about becoming an LFF sustaining member, I'm going to throw a link up top there uh, for more info. It starts at a dollar a month and you get some really cool perks. And for those of you that didn't skip, so there's gonna be a special promo code in your inbox if you are an LFF sustaining member. So that means, yeah, even joining at the $1 a month level is going to get you a discount if you are looking to, uh, to collect some prints. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, let's get back to framing. With that tricky linen tape out of the way, we can go ahead and get our gloves back on. And I'm gonna open up my window for my mat. And we're gonna remove our prints and get ready for hinging. our print out of here. So the idea of a hinge mount is to indirectly grab the print. We never wanna just like tape it in. Now that inkjet print from, uh, from Lauren did have some tape on the physical edges, uh, but the way I like to do it is to make sure uh, that we're actually never touching the front facing portion of a print. This allows us to show the entire surface of the print if we want, but since I usually give a little bit of extra allowance, on my window in the mat, we'll be able to hide our own hinge. So uh, what I need to establish is where my, my composition, where my print is gonna sit within the window. So I'm gonna like just barely hold up the window of my mat board and then move my prints until it's somewhere I like it. Once I have it somewhere I like it, I need to hold my print down in place. Now you can purchase uh, fancy dedicated little bean bags or, or bags of shot to hold it down. But any, uh, any piece of uh, 90s bean bag nostalgia will also work to hold down your, uh, your print once you have it where you like it. My, my platypus is holding that in place. Now we need to set up our hinge. To set up our hinge, all we need to do is carefully Drop our piece of linen tape behind the print. Now, wait, this isn't actually holding anything yet. That's right, it's sitting behind the print. Once I have it, or I want it there, I'll place another piece of tape right over top that, forming a little T. This is a T hinge. So I've already got half the print done. Grab another piece of tape, lift up my corner. Now, if this is an inkjet print, you wanna be careful not to bend it, but this is a fiber print, so it's gonna be fine. Coming right up to the edge. So the tape is never actually touching the print. So when we execute our hinge mount properly, I should be able to take my little beanie off here, the print is still affixed to the board. I can shake it, try to shift it. It's not going anywhere. Again, because we have the weight of the mat, that's sitting over top of it, I have just enough adhesive to let the print kind of float. Now, if you have a very, very large print with wider dimensions, sure, you're gonna to need to add extra T hinges along the way. If you have a little bit of extra adhesive, there's a little bit up here that's still showing. This tape is thin enough. I can add an extra layer right up top here to cover it, and job's done. 
If you haven't attached your mat board yet, same thing, you can take some linen tape and just drop some along the corner. Just make sure to give yourself an extra little bit. Otherwise, the mat may not sit uh, flush right on top, but there it is. So moving on to frame assembly, these are just some simple black aluminum frames from a company called uh, Nielsen. I purchased my Nielsen frames from a variety of places. There's a place here in Columbus called Blick Art Materials where they sell these as ready-made kits. You can just buy the dimensions separate. And then if you buy four, you know, if, if you make a rectangle with two different length purchases, you're gonna get the hardware with it. Inside this hardware box are the pieces we need to hold these frames together via tension. You're gonna get four pieces uh, like this, which these are just spacers. You're gonna get four tensioners which sit on top of those spacers. You're going to get tension springs. These are gonna go inside the frame to push up against these tensioners and hold everything together to the glass. And then you're also going to get the hook mounting hardware. We're gonna set aside the hook mounting hardware and the springs for now because we're just gonna get the core of our frame together. So I'm going to lay these out in the order in which I would like to see my print framed. And then I'm gonna flip these, these frame sectionals upside down. On the back side of our frame, you can see there's these little channels. This is to allow our tensioners and our spacers to sit right inside the frame. So these two corners are gonna sit on top of each other. As I tighten the screw from this one, it's gonna push against the spacer and fill up the remainder of the gap on this frame. Place my corner, place my corner, take my, my flathead screwdriver on each side until it's tight. And you'll actually see it start to push up the metal as the tension gets applied. There's our corner together. This is a teeny tiny gap, but if we flip it over, we should see it's a really nice, it's a really nice corner. So we have a 16, we need to add a 20. So I've got my 20. Got a corner. With three of our four sections completed, now what we can do is drop in our uh, drop in our print with our mat, kind of see where everything's at. So this is facing outward, so I can go ahead and drop in my mat board, mount board, and print sandwich, and that's already looking pretty nice. Let me go ahead and insert our glass. I'm just gonna slide this in. Try not to push it against the mat in case there is a sharp edge on glass, and that looks, looks pretty good. And now with our glass installed, we're going to carefully flip our frame. All right, with that flipped, we only have to do one more 16 inch edge. If you want your prints to be displayed and you wanna make it very, very easy to manage your print collection, find a frame that you like that can be assembled like this and do a lot of them. Next thing I need to do to make sure my print doesn't shift around in transit or when it's hanging up on the wall, I need to add my tension springs. This is one of the more fun parts in my opinion. Uh, what these do is they slide and fold underneath, underneath the edge of the frame and they push the, mount, uh, the mounting board, mat board, print, and glass combo as close together as possible. Slide in one piece. Each edge is going to get two springs. If you have a very large print, you may need extras. This corner, slide it under. Now, if you need a hand sliding these under, you can just take your screwdriver, your flathead, and push it all the way to the edge. Push that in, push that in. And now, I can move this print, I can really manhandle the frame, and it's not going to shift at all. It's, it's already really nice and in place. And our last order of business is getting this wired and ready to hang. I like wire hanging my prints because it's just a lot easier on a print this size. I can use just a nail uh, or two nails. I don't have to do any of the sawtooth hooks. Some shows will require sawtooths. Most will accept wire. This is just a standard framing wire. Uh, you can also get wire that is already coated. So this has a plastic coating on it. It's easier to handle and wrap, uh, but this is a slightly thicker wire. I'm gonna use this for today. So yeah, this wire is gonna work great. 
And then I've got these two little pieces. These guys are here to hold the wire and help it string across the outside of the frame. So, and these, just like our frame corners, have these little tensioning screws, because without that, it would just be kind of loose. Now for a print, you don't want to have a lot of slack on your cord. You don't want it super tight because uh, that'll pull it off from the wall. And if you have too much slack, it'll also droop off the wall. So you want to give it, uh, I usually like to put these about a third of the way down, a quarter, anywhere from a quarter to a third of the way down from the print and give the wire enough slack so it's going to hang just underneath the top of the picture, usually that first, uh, uh, that first 10, 15 percent. Fortunately, I've already got some little screw holes here kind of telling me where I should have it. And I'm just going to push down on this side and tighten. Now start about here, tighten it down. It's going to be great. All right, now I need to cut some wire. I usually take the wire and I go about twice the length of one of these past it. That's a, that allows me to get a nice, really nice looking wrap on it. So about there, that's, that's gonna be enough wire. And you can always trim it down. So I'm going to thread this through. And this is, this is a part that uh, Professor Jeff was a big stick, uh, stickler on. Once this wire is in, I'm gonna pull it really close to this edge and I'm gonna start rolling it over. And this is where you can be really nice and fancy if you like, or you can just kind of crimp it and be done. But I like, I think, yeah, six, three, four, Five, six is a good number of crimps on there. Trim it, and then I will crimp it like that. This way, anybody handling it's not going to uh, get like a metal shaving or anything on them. That's, that's important. So I'm gonna thread this guy through. So I don't want it taut like this. While I'm holding with my right hand, I'm gonna push with my left hand and get, get my wire where I like it, like this. Take this through, tighten it there, and then I'm gonna start looping. So one loop, two loop, three, four, five, six. And look at how nice that looks. That's super nice and tight. Looks like a professional job. As close to the edge as we can. Crimp it. I can try and crimp with my fingers. Yeah, right there. And there we go. All right, there's our print. Here's our little nail on the wall. Just go find that. Excellent. See where it wants to hang, then just shift it until we're nice and level. Like that. All right, there's the print. It's looking good. Now, as far as the composition, this type of frame, this one has a bit of a heavy kind of empty area for it. These were frames that were used for a show. They were standardized. Everybody got a 16 by 20, whether or not it was portrait or horizontal, that's fine. On a mat, I tend to like prints that have even spacing at the top left and right. The bottom can always have a little bit more weight to it. That kind of anchors the print in its place. And again, empty space gives your eye somewhere to go to say, wait, maybe I shouldn't be looking here. Whoop. Look up here. When you have too thin a border, your eyes kind of go outside the print very easily and you move on. For smaller prints, you can go with a smaller border or sometimes you can just have a ton of empty space. It's up to you, the photographer, what you wanna have. So there we go. With, uh, with a few extra minutes, a couple of tools, one that is probably not standard, that linen tape, we were able to take a print that already looked great and then throw it behind glass and really have this thing ready to hang, put in a gallery, wherever we want to. And it's gonna stay safe and archival in here. Our total cost of materials today, if I include the linen tape, the frame, the hardware store glass, everything, for this 16 by 20 framed print, we are still under 60 US dollars. That's infinitely cheaper than going to a custom framing shop. Is it worth your time? Let me know down below in the comments. I think for anybody that's doing their own gallery shows, uh, creating their own home gallery, or just wanna improve the look of their work and really see it hung up, 
I think DIY framing is a great way to go. How do you like to frame your prints? Do you uh, do you do the hinge mounting? Do you put them behind glass? Do you print them on metal? Uh, I also want to know down below in the comments. It's kind of an interesting thing. I don't see enough people framing their prints or even talking about that part of the process. It's still important. We need to show our work and this is just kind of putting it in the best light possible. If you have any questions about framing your photographs, whether they're digital, film, large format, you can always feel free to drop those down below in the comments. And for the long form questions, feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.